program is brought to you by Dascoin. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Inside Blockchain, the one show that focuses on blockchain startups and the impact of blockchain technology in Africa. My name is Sushi and I am joined by Bashir Aminu, the CEO of Ben Hub. How are you today, Bashir? I'm very good, thank you. I can see that you're good. So Bashir and I had a very, very long chat before we got into the studio. And I can tell you that if there's one thing that he's passionate about, it is blockchain technology. Now, Bashir and I will be talking about why you should be a blockchain developer. But before we get into all of that, Bashir, why don't you tell us about Ben Hub. Well, um, thank you very much for having me on the show. You're welcome. Ben Hub is basically um, a blockchain services company. We produce blockchain products for both enterprise and end users. So basically, an end user would be um, an everyday cryptocurrency user. You know, someone that uses an exchange and uses other, you know, blockchain apps as an, a single person. And then for enterprise as well, uh, companies that want to build blockchain products, we can also help with that as well. So um, there are a lot of products that we're building, focusing on end users right mm. now before we enter into the enterprise version of uh, our services. All well. right, beautiful, beautiful. So there are a whole lot of people out there who are not educated about you know, blockchain technology, cryptocurrency and the likes. Mm. So I'm sure many people do not know what a you know, blockchain developer is. Mm. So could you just you know, tell us what a blockchain developer is? Who a blockchain developer is? Well, a, a, a blockchain developer means you know different things to different people, and there's actually some kind of debate as to who actually can call themselves a blockchain developer and not. Oh. While some of the opinion is of uh, a blockchain developer is someone that can build smart contracts, for example, mm. on the Ethereum blockchain. Some of the opinion that if you can build smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, you're not really a blockchain developer. You're just an Ethereum developer. Oh. So, um, and um, my own definition of a blockchain developer is someone that can use, that understands the blockchain, the underlying principles of the blockchain technology itself, and can apply various tools. It doesn't really matter the tool. Can apply various tools into utilizing that fundamental principle behind blockchain technology and putting it into you know, their own um, version of applications as well. So a blockchain developer, will, whether you are developing on Ethereum, you're developing on EOS, which mm -hmm. is an upcoming blockchain as well, or whatever, or Hyperledger or Ripple, as long as you, can, you understand the underlying principles of blockchain technology and uh, can actually build products that use that, those principles, you are a blockchain developer. Oh, righty. Yeah. Okay, that's so interesting. And I'm sure, okay, there are some technical skills that yeah. are required for somebody to be a blockchain developer. So what are those technical skills required for one to be a blockchain developer? Well, um, technical skills to be a blockchain developer is you have to be, you have to have a programming background. Okay. First. Um, you, you, you need to, uh, you know, know the normal, um, you know, languages for coding and you know creating normal applications without blockchain in the first place you know skills like maybe javascript or you know um, c plus plus or others okay. kind of okay. languages as well you need to understand those languages well then you need okay. to now apply those skills to your blockchain technology so skills needed to be a blockchain developer basically is normal skills that a web developer mm -hmm. or an application developer without even the blockchain has already and you can now see how you can understand the underlying principles of blockchain technology and apply these skills to build you know um, systems like blockchain technology um having said that blockchain development is not like normal development you okay know? there are a lot of things that as a blockchain developer you can't really do that when you are um, developer of a normal you know you know, um, financial system that we all know today, you, you can utilize as well. Okay, well, what, what are those things? Well, though? well, first of all, you're building for a distributed system. So Not a centralized. Exactly. Okay. You know, <laughs> it, it, it kind of complicates a lot of things, you know. And uh, I think it's very important for us to know this. You know, I hear of a lot of people that are coming up with various applications for blockchain technology. You know, you want to build Opera Mini on the blockchain. <laughs> um, it's, it's important to know that blockchain is not for everything. You know, blockchain has some really, really, um, it has some drawbacks. Mm. Blockchain, first of all, is a very, very slow system. 
Yeah. How so? Yeah, it's compared to our um, traditional computers. Let's just say a blockchain, for example, the Ethereum blockchain. It's okay. a supercomputer, that's what they call it. Um, compared to other computers, yeah. to store one gigabyte of um, um, data on the Ethereum blockchain, for example, would cost you nothing less than $100,000. Oh, wow. Which, um, if you are using Amazon Web Services, <laughs> just four cents, you can store I that. Totally so it, it's, it's, one is very slow. It's, um, it's very expensive. You know, blockchain is expensive. And um, people don't really know this. You know, everybody is just riding on the hype. You know, I was even to, thinking, yeah. you know, everybody that comes here, yeah. you know, talks about the good side. Oh exactly. my God, it's so no, amazing. No, no. No, no technology, especially a technology like that is so new, like blockchain mm. can be all good. Of course, it has its very um, its disadvantages. So it, it's, it's very slow and it's very expensive. But what it's, it, it, that's why blockchain technology should be used for what it's meant to be used what for. What is it meant to be used it's for? Meant, it's meant to be used, you know, for systems that need that trustlessness and that, that, that need to be decentralized. Not everything necessarily needs to be decentralized. Um, um, you know, for what it's good for, it's actually the, the only um, computer that can do that in anywhere in the world, you know. But um, for... It's, it's very good for what it's meant to be to do. Oh, but right. for all that thing, everything else is, is pretty is pretty bad. I would love to know what it is meant to be used for. Okay. Could, could, you, could you just step? Well, <laughs> if, if you need to build an app or a system that needs to be distributed and decentralized, okay. that is very, that it's, um, it has an added advantage of being uh, distributed and decentralized. And of course, there is no, um, and it, it also provides a level of security that no computer in the world can provide yeah. for you. So, so I, you, need okay. to, you need to find how you can balance all this, you know, okay, are you willing to sacrifice security for cost? Are you willing, to, you know, you need to be able to, you know, balance what you need and what you don't need before you can decide if blockchain technology Mm. is really needed for what you are trying mm. to build. Okay, so I, I need to be clear about something here. Are you of the opinion that blockchain technology should only be used for certain use cases? Exactly. And that it should only be confined to, you know, be used for certain sectors exactly. and should not exactly be for mass use? Well, in my opinion, blockchain technology can actually be used for any sector, but it should be used for certain parts oh, of okay. each of those sectors. Oh, right. You know, like in agriculture, for example, you want to be able to, you know, store, you know, um, when you're moving your crops from, you know, from a certain location to when it gets to the table. You, you want medical records, for example. You know, it should only be used for those certain, you know, part of things. But, you know, some people want to build everything on the blockchain. You know, <laughs> it's, it's very expensive. People don't really realize that. And it's very slow. It's very, very mm -hmm. slow. Wow, wow. That, that's like very good on your part. Like I said earlier, a whole lot of people come here and tell us just, you know, the amazing parts of the use of blockchain technology. Nobody really talks about the drawbacks which you have, you know, come to tell us. That's very nice. Okay, so for people out there who are interested in, you know, being blockchain developers right now, yeah. where can they get the necessary tools for learning? Where can they get the necessary scholarship opportunities in order for them to gain proficiency in this particular aspect of you know developing yeah um unfortunately we are in a very new era so okay. there's not a lot of resources there's not a lot of um places you can go to to learn this technology um and the places that are available are extremely expensive so um you know i would say that um you should just be have an open mind to learning the technology just you know, do a lot of research. You need to do a lot of research because mm. it's not it's easier to do research if you want to be a web developer, for example. There are thousands of tools, out there are thousands of websites that can teach you web development. But for blockchain technology, it's pretty limited. And also um, at Venhub, you know, we have blockchain developers. We won't call them blockchain development experts. You know, a lot of people are, like to throw the word <laughs> expert around. There right? are very there are very few experts. In blockchain technology is a very new technology so you can't have experts you know people who just um, read the bitcoin white paper and you know <laughs> trade a few coins and then they start like, calling themselves experts no yeah. um it's it's important that you know 
and in new technology like this, there are not many experts as well. So, but well, we do have blockchain um, developers at Venhub, and we, we, you know, we continue while well, we send them to places to so, increase, okay. you know, their um, skills and capacity as well. So, you know, uh, one of the goals, our goals, is to, you know, create a kind of blockchain academy where you can come in and you know Learn get about, everything you need okay. to know about blockchain technology and um, it's going to start with you know just a few boot camps okay. as well leading to the full academy so we're going to be taking you know some you know blockchain courses blockchain boot camps you know every now and then to educate people on you know if you want to become a blockchain te uh, technology developer you know you should look um, if you will, um, just check out um, Venhub very soon oh, we'll really? be launching a series of programs and hackathons okay. to just get people first of because first of all is to allow people to see allow you know because our web development space in nigeria right now is very very robust you know we have one of the you know most robust web development space in the world in nigeria oh, wow. so a lot of people from you know various places in the world hire our developers to develop products for them so we need to get our developers to see why they need to, you know, switch. You know, oh. not switch. You can still be a web developer and, <laughs> and still be, still be a blockchain just to developer. enhance your skill. You okay. know, get into the because technology is something that is evolving. You know, we are talking Definitely. about AI every day now. Yeah. You know, just a few years ago, we didn't really no have all this AI it. and all yeah. that. So you need to constantly evolve with the technology, or else you'll be left behind. Mm. So uh, there's no, there's no better, you know, space in development right now that is paying as much as blockchain technology you i totally know, agree you I know totally agree blockchain developers <laughs> and four times more than you know normal, your developers, normal developers out and there for every um for every one blockchain developer there are like 10 jobs waiting for that developer mm. you know uh, i just read this morning you know that on udemy um the blockchain development um on um, Upwork, the freelance website, the okay. demand for blockchain developers has grew 3,000% just this year alone. Oh, wow. So there's enormous demand, you know, and the money to knowledge ratio is, is very, very wide. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of capital and no, nobody to spend it on, you know, there no, are no yeah, developers. Yeah, so um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brilliant opportunity to just get yourself equipped, you know, because the storm is coming. You need to be ready for when it comes and you know um if you are a web developer or whatever kind of developer you are right now it's a no-brainer blockchain development is the future and of you just course, need to get yourself equipped course, with these necessary course. skills so um wh who are you know the top developers in the world top blockchain developers in the world that you tell viewers out there to look out for to watch out for especially people in the crypto space yeah um we had the uh, a workshop with jack tana um, yesterday at um, workshop in VI, okay. he's one. He's one of the top blockchain developers in the world. So we we're able to take out some of our developers there. Okay. Yesterday, I was me myself. I was there to learn some of his skills that he has learned over the years. Um, Jack Tana is such. He has a lot of experience with blockchain development. Mm. You know, he's worked with a lot of companies. He's made different blockchain apps. If you if you go to his LinkedIn page, you see it in capital letters there. I uh, recruiters don't contact me. You understand? He has had so many um, requests to come and work that he's just overwhelmed. So he's in capital letter in his LinkedIn profile. Oh, Do wow. not contact me if you're a recruiter. So there's a lot. Of, there's such an overwhelming demand for his skill that he can even tell people that do not contact me. Absolutely. So you know, if you, if you are not seeing the opportunity here, I mean, should be. So Jack Tana is one of the top um, blockchain developers that I that I know. And then, um, obviously, the ones that we know, like Dan La Daniel Larima and Vitalik, those are yeah. like the icons that we I all... Mean, I mean, they're pretty popular yeah, among people in the creative space. Yeah, exactly. And um, one, of the, one of the top blockchains that, people, that is not really that much hyped is Lisk. I find Lisk um, to be one of the best blockchains in the world, and they have one of the best blockchain developers. So, um, yeah, when, when I t think about who has who are the top blockchain developers in the world i just think about the list developers and then bitcoin developers as well bitcoin has just the most robust set of 
developers as beautiful, well. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So, um, what are your final tips to people out there who are interested in um, in, in being blockchain developers? What, what would you tell them? Well, I would say just you know have an open mind. You shouldn't um, doubt that this is the future. You just need to convince yourself that this is something that you really need to learn and really get yourself equipped with. And um, you need to start, you know, if it all starts with research. Google is a very powerful tool. Right. And yes. um, people, some people, people usually underestimate the power of Google Boy. It's, it's an extremely powerful tool. You can start from there, start doing research. It's very important to understand the principles of the technology. Mm. You understand? You need to get the basic concept. You understand? It's very, very important. Get the, the concept. Why blockchain? What is, what is distributed? You know, you need to understand. You don't really need to understand cryptography, but it helps if you understand cryptography and how the whole blockchain works, how blocks are made. So it's, it's important to go back to the basics. You know, do a lot of research. I will recommend um, some courses online that you can just research on. You can okay. research about... Um, the uh, mastering Bitcoin by right. Andreas, and you can you know get the basic concept of blockchain technology as well. Then you can also um, check out the uh, there's uh, I work for RSK, um, is is a Bitcoin side chain. Okay. So there's a course for RSK right now where you can take it and then take the exam to become a certified blockchain developer. So oh, you wow. can start from there as well okay. to get the basic concept you know of blockchain development. So you know keep your Mind open, you shouldn't have any doubt that, you know, this is something you need to go into. It is extremely lucrative, as in there's no development space that is as lucrative uh, as this right now. So there are basically three kind of developments you can look into if you want to become a blockchain developer. Oh, right now. So you can look at Hyperledger. Okay. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fabric developed by the Linux um, Foundation okay. for blockchain systems. You can look at Hyperledger. You can look at Ripple. Ripple is actually very, very active in terms of blockchain development. And um, you can look at Ethereum. So, so that, those are the three major spaces. And of course, they're the ones coming up like EOS and the rest of them as well. So just choose what best fits you, you know, Hyperledger, Ripple, Ethereum, or whatever one is coming and, mm. you know, start building yourself, you know, getting research and um, build your portfolio. And you, do, you, don't, you don't need to look for work, you know, as a blockchain developer because the demand, there's like 90% demand and just 10% supply. So there's a lot, there's a lot to gain. A from lot of, being a a lot of opportunities, yeah, a, lot a lot of opportunities. opportunities. All right, and we have come to the end of this particular segment of the show. My name is Sushi and you are still watching Inside Blockchain. And I have been discussing with Mr. Bashir Aminu. And if you're a developer and you're out there and you are not yet a blockchain developer, you need to get on this particular train because if not, you're going to be left behind. The world is evolving at a very, very high speed and you don't want to be left behind. You do not want to be left behind. I'll go on this quick break and when I come back, you see who my next guest is. Stay tuned. My name is JK Nas. Hi, I'm Essie. My name is Akisini Jagede. My name is Simeon Edigwe. You keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching Crypto TV. Crypto TV. Crypto TV Plus. Crypto TV Plus. It's a bomb, I guess. This is Big Beto. You're watching Crypto TV Plus. Keep watching. This program is brought to you by Dascoin. Welcome back. Before we went on that break, I was with Bashir Aminu and we discussed why you should be a blockchain developer. Right now, I am with a very beautiful young lady. Her name is Ruthie Selva. How are you? I'm fine. 
I love that smile. I always say that. I love that smile. Ruth is the CEO of Beat Mama and the director of Ben Hub. And Ruth and I are going to be talking about how blockchain technology can solve remittance problems in Africa. But before we go into all that serious talk, we would like you to, you know, I'd like you to talk to us about, you know, who you are and about Beat Mama. How did Beat Mama come about, though? Well. You've said all about me, but um, Beat Mama started um, in April of 2016. Uh, I saw there was a lot of demand and supply for Bitcoin on the Nigerian market, and I said, why don't I try this out? And I tried it, and I loved it, and ever since then, I've not turned back. Oh, wow. Yeah. Since 2016? Yeah. I don't know, 2016, I didn't even know what blockchain technology was. Wow, wow. Okay, so we're going to be talking about, you know, how blockchain technology can solve remittance problems in Africa. Okay. And I, we know that there are a whole lot of problems concerning remittance, you know, sending money from abroad to your home country. Yeah. There's just a whole lot of issues, you know, surrounding that. But you see, um, what... A whole lot of people don't know how to pinpoint these issues. What would you say are the problems exactly with remittance in Africa? Um, first of all, I, um, I would say the first problem we have is um, delay. Okay. We have a lot of delay when you're sending money from outside the country and when you're also sending to outside the country. Yeah. So um, because of these traditional systems we have before, it takes days, it takes one or two days, and sometimes hours if there are little transactions that need to just go so fast. Yeah. It will take yeah. maybe seven hours or eight hours before okay. someone gets it. So in order for us to solve these problems, that's why we need to look into the blockchain. Of course, apparently. Yeah. But, you know, these problems, okay, like you said, delay. I think another, you know, another problem that is encountered with remittance in Africa is the issue of cost. Okay. Like, I want to I yeah. send, okay, my, I have somebody outside who wants to send money to me, and the person will be charged about 10% of the amount that they're sending to me. Uh, about 2-3%, okay, give yes. or take. Oh, okay, yeah. beautiful. Uh, about 2-3%. But um, with blockchain, I don't want to say using Bitcoin because there are other um, blockchains that you can use in sending money, which is we have the Stellar, we have the Ripple. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's cheaper with them. Beautiful. We'll yeah. get to that part there. We'll get to All that right. part. But you see, this problem, the problem of delay, would you say it's, you know, it, it can be associated with individuals, cost by the individuals, or is it the government? Because I, I do not want to believe that five years from now, I will still want to send money to my mom. I'm yeah. outside Africa. I, will, I want to send mom, money to my mom. Yeah. And I, I will still experience this kind of delay. And I don't want to believe that. So do you think these problems are actually caused by individuals or the government? No, it, we won't say they are the government. Well, let's just say they are traditional systems mm -hmm. that have been put in place. Maybe for now, uh, let's say you send money from outside the country. You're in the U.S., you send the money. The money g needs to go through a certain ledger. It needs to correct in the yeah, other yes. one. And everybody needs to have copies of it before it comes down to mm -hmm. Nigeria. When it comes down to Nigeria again, it needs to be cleared. As if you are clearing goods at the port. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that, that's the problem. I won't say it's government per se. Okay. And also some government regulations also cause the problem because, let me say, in, in U.S., you can send $10,000. But here in Nigeria, if you have uh, $10,000 in your account, EFCC said the bank should not <laughs> fight it. So definitely there will be some issues of, of, of friction course, of course, along the way. Of course. Yeah. So do you think this problem can be solved with blockchain technology? Sure. Why not? Okay. Um, like with the Stellar blockchain, you could even send micro nano payments. I'm talking about sending 500 naira with wow. the snap of your fingers. And so what, what, what kind of time frame are we looking at for it to get we're to? We're looking it? at seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. we're looking at seconds. So it goes across borders. And because it's a decentralized system, it's not involved with the whole government regulation. This and that mm. there is not too much documentation okay. and everything. So, okay, for the Ripple, I've not tried Ripple before. Okay. But I've read about it and I think it's okay. But it's also um, getting banks to partner with them. Mm. 
so okay. that the banking system can use their platform as a blanket mm -hmm. to underline this um, remittance okay. problem. You, you said it can be solved with blockchain technology. Yeah. And there are a whole lot of people out there who do not know how exactly this can be solved with blockchain technology. Like, okay. what kind of process would, would it go through? Like, how can it be solved with blockchain technology, basically? Well, um, I can't really explain that. Well, what I'm trying to say is, uh, it has already been done. Okay. So now you just need to like plug and play. Okay. You understand? A system has been built for you. So you just plug and play. Like now, if we use, for example, the Bitcoin, if you notice, I have my wallet, you have your wallet. Mm -hmm. Whether you are in US or not, if you send me, let me say, one BTC, mm -hmm. I'll receive it over here in seconds. Of course. Yeah. So that's how the blockchain technology is going to help, help solve that problem yeah and you know you're talking you're talking about it from the individual aspect of things yeah now when when we're talking about solving these issues we want we want to see a change you know a whole lot of people still you know struggle with all these and i think one of the ways that this can happen this change can happen is if the government can adopt it massively so in what ways can you think the government can make you know this remittance flow much mm -hmm. easier the process much simpler and you know basically make it easy for the layman out there to be able yeah. to you know receive money from his brother who's yeah. in the u.s or the uk or even in china uh for now for now unfortunately those systems are not yet there Okay. But we hope the government will work. Well, what would you tell the government? How, how would you uh, want the government to, to solve this issue? Well, um, if I was the one, I would tell the government to also allow um, MFPs, which is a mobile, mobile financial providers. Okay. And that's where you have your Airtel and MTN, the okay. mobile money. So even though someone doesn't know about blockchain, you understand, they can use mobile money. But they assist their transactions and everything is happening on blockchain. Okay. So it can be deleted, it's only immutable. You understand? Of so that way the government can see what's going on and also the average man on the road can be able to partake in this kind of thing. Like okay. uh, like as you said this, I just remembered a company in Ghana. They are doing similar thing. Oh as, they are. Yeah. Okay. So if if you want to send your money to your loved one at home, All right. you send them in Bitcoin. And when they receive it, they send your loved one through mobile money. So you see, oh, the wow. person doesn't even need to know that something is happening on the blockchain right. or right. something like that. They just receive so the money. So the person that are out there can use it. The guy that's in Ghana out there can use it. That is exactly. just so beautiful. Yeah. And we have, unfortunately, we have run out of time. What are you okay. going to tell viewers out there, you know, people out there, basically, about, you know, blockchain technology? What are your final words? Well, for now, uh, I would still say uh, blockchain is still young. Okay. Um, most people feel that, oh, I have a business and I should just jump on the blockchain wagon. No. Blockchain is not actually for every business. Bashir it's actually said that in the, <laughs> in the previous segment. Okay. Just like you read his voice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not actually for everybody. It's for businesses and people that actually um, need to do with records and ledgers. So um, records cannot be tampered with. Mm -hmm. it's not, so I would say instead of uh, before you jump on the hype, you should try and read more and try to find out if blockchain is actually for your business or if it's actually for of you course. before you think about going ahead. Of with course, it. of course. Thank sure. you so, so much for joining Thank me on you. today's show. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You're still watching Inside Blockchain. My name is Sushi and this is Crypto TV Plus. We have come to the end of today's episode, but don't forget you can join the conversation across all social media platforms. All you have to do is subscribe and follow us on all social media platforms at Crypto TV Plus. My name is Sushi and until I come your way again, stay blessed. This program is brought to you by Dascoin.